I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast. This is your bonus episode. What does that mean? You're all going to get boned is what it means. That's not what it means. I'm trying to be funny. Bone us. Oh, that's oh, kind of You get to bone us. Oh, yeah, that's that's why we have oh, Tim we here. Bone us. Oh, hey, hey. We are the worst I'm here to help bone you guys. Yeah. 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 You can bone all three of us if you want. Bone well, us. Maybe. Yeah. You're gonna, it depends, actually. You got to sign a waiver. Um. So... <laughs> Your bonus episode, hurt. what that means is, yeah, we have a lot of lube, though. I have a lube sponsor, Uber Lube. Um, okay, so. This is an ad-free episode. Ad-free episode. episode. Give a shout out to Uber Lube. We're just kidding. We love Uber Lube, but we're not I'm not, not going to tell it. you where you can get it. Yeah, don't. Go find it. Good <laughs> yeah. luck. It's Google a wild it. chase. Uh, all right. Anyway, so yeah, that's what bonus means. It's your ad-free episode. We try to do these at least once a month, if possible, uh, just to give you a little something extra, a little something special. This episode is with Tim, who uh, also hosted us on his podcast called Sex Ed with Tim. Uh, and I believe the podcast was just launched in June. And I think this episode is either going online in July or August. So this is 2021, y'all. Um, but you can hear us time on his podcast. Exist. I know. Time to, yeah, we're living in the, the evergreen era of the interweb. So. <laughs> Um, but we're here today to talk to Tim about sex work specifically and his journey in the field of sex work. And he's already saying he has some salacious stories to share. Uh, and also, I just want to give a shout out to Tim about our excellent audio that uh, has changed because we switched over to a new podcast database that Tim actually recommended to us. If you're like, wow, shame of sex sounds better. If you don't think we sound better then uh, sorry about but that. But- <laughs> I pretty, I'm pretty sure Amy is going to get off of any sex and relationship coaching and podcasting just to become an audio expert. She's like, did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what are you, you doing? That cricket about little- the corner? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh my. Breeze? Oh, yeah. no. yes. I'm like, no. Amy, you are becoming did Tim's a dog part in the corner. Obsessive no. human about audio. And I'm, I'm, slightly deaf in one ear so she'll hear something and i'm like i have no idea what you're talking about but well, anyway <laughs> but squadcast what we're using now we'll, yeah. we'll just we're say, not sponsored by squad no no either. but we we're have definitely shout out to squadcast though yeah. we yeah. love them hey, hey, it's thank squadcast. you squadcast yeah you're they have their own podcast too anyways not an episode for squadcast this is for you <laughs> tim so we are going to start with the same question but i realize it's not a question because we did this in our last you podcast. just realized that for four years it's a demand and a command <laughs> um please and i'll say please first now it's not a demand can you tell us about yourself and how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality and specifically in sex work. Ooh, so hello. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Tim. I am a just now certified sex educator. I am hailing from Toronto, Canada. Uh, I've been a sex educator since 2018, where the first sex education I ever did was teach a girlfriend how to do anal. Um, Yeah, that was a really fun little coffee date. Uh, before that, I was a escort. Uh, bleh, I was an escort. I was escorting from 2012 full time and on and off until 2016. Uh, and then I went to school for business. I graduated with honors. Hey, and I decided to use my knowledge of business and sex to enter the field of sex education. So that's where I am today. Oh, so you just basically got boned with sex work. <laughs> exactly. And, and sex education. I love mm-hmm. it. So that, that I, whenever we have had past guests that have talked about sex work or even escorting, it's always really exciting for our listeners. We get feedback about it. People listen to episodes. And that's what I think you have some incredible stories. When we were on your show, you're so funny and just uh you're you're like a big cuddly human even though i can only see your head and your microphone i believe that is hey <laughs> and so, he's really good on a pole and he's very good on a pole which i'm sure we'll get into mm-hmm. so w- w- my question is a couple questions here what got you into sex work and what type of sex work do you enjoy most talk about what you love well 
really, I just went into sex work mainly because I realized how good I was at fucking. <laughs> so I'm like, PhD I mean, in right? Yeah. A PhD in fucking. Well, okay, to be more accurate, the way I entered into sex work was I was working retail uh, at a store, which I will not mention because hopefully they don't listen to this and like they're going to find out that they've been using their storefront for pimping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is a big Please tell chain. me it was like Bay Crew or something. It's like some... <laughs> no, uh, no you, don't have say, to, you don't have to say it. We don't, no, let's just I say it's a synonym know. for... It's a synonym for a space in between two things. The, oh, got it. I know. Yeah. Fall okay. all into the yeah. underground. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it was through that company where I was doing inventory late at night. And then I saw a girl. Her name was Ashley. We were the only ones there. Uh, it's like late. We're doing inventory. We're so bored. Time passes. And she just brought up the fact that like, oh, I'm just doing this to moonlight and like feel normal. When in reality, I am a pimp. So I was like, oh, OK, what is that? Uh, I was like, I. this was me when I was like, I don't know what the hell anything is. Right. I'm like. I'm just a little innocent baby lamb just wobbling my legs and walking through the world of sex. And then she told me about like how uh, she employs her team of escorts to see different clients all over the city. And she was like complimenting me, really rubbing my ego. You're like, Tim, you're so hot. I feel like you can like fuck your way through a weekend. And I'm like, I mean sure if you say so so uh i ended up in her bedroom little did i know that that was an audition hmm. yeah I, it was an audition <laughs> this was this was when i was still identifying as bisexual by the way um this was on like my sexual journey so it only happened pole in the room or is it, or is it just <laughs> uh the only no. pole was Bye. was my poll yeah yeah <laughs> no um i did like do the whole uh routine of like a lap dance you know or a little strip tease just to give her a little flavor uh but you know alcohol is running and then your hormones and your horniness is all over the place and then yeah uh i ended up having sex with her and she just gave me money and i was like wait what is this for it's like I'm go I'm going to ask you to start on Monday. I'm like, uh, okay, sure. <laughs> I guess this is where we are now. So, yeah, um, a lot of the clients that I had through this magical pimp were like, um, what do you call them? Like the one percenters, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were like rich uh, people, like exactly. very rich. Ones? Oh, okay, mm -hmm, rich, rich white men. Just say it, rich people. Yeah, okay, rich got it, folks. Yeah, so it was like a lot of uh, CEOs, um, like fundraiser organizers. From yep, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, what is it? Like media moguls, like a uh, cable company, etc. Yeah, whatever. Um, and it wasn't just men; it was also women. Uh, but like the cool thing about like my uh, women clients were that um, they didn't really look for sex so much. They were more interested in just companionship, you know, someone to hold their hand at night or someone to be their arm candy for an event. I was like, okay, this I can do. But, you know, there would be the occasional man who would want to uh, get, it, get it in in more ways than one <laughs> in a little... Uh, I don't want to call it dangerous, but risque. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was very, like, not vanilla, I guess mm -hmm. is the best term to use. Mm -hmm. So, are we talking about anal? Are we talking about anal? <laughs> <laughs> All we the can't things. make assumptions. It's shameless sex. We can't All make assumptions. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> See what you did there? Sorry. I mean, Sorry like, there were, there were some clients that were like, he just wanted me to cradle him, you know? It was, it was just some, it was just like, like no sex mm -hmm. i just want to be naked and i want you to cradle me in your arms and just rock back and forth for the hour and i'm like oh okay easiest money i've ever spent and then i was like what do i say what do i like you know do i say something daddy loves you or like your father never loved you i'm like oh okay, i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep quiet and like rock back and forth until he's like satisfied 
Uh, so that was like a little bit more on the mild non-vanilla stuff, but a little more of the wild non-vanilla would be uh, rope, uh, handcuffs, a lot more role playing. And uh, there was this one time where, and I still don't know if he is a priest or not, but there was a client who literally at the ready pulled out an entire wardrobe, like a Catholic priest wardrobe out of his closet it just seemed way too like efficient for him to know how to put it on so quickly. Uh, and like the Catholics are going to know this, like, you know, in the Holy mass where you turn bread and body of blood and wine, we used Pinot Grigio um, or as I'm going to call it P no Grigio because oh. we wanted to recreate a golden shower. Oh, and, oh while in his, nice. while in the priest suit. Yeah. So I would be like the altar boy, and then he would piss on me using the Pinot Grigio. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So he'd like recite, like, I don't know, a Bible passage or something. I wasn't really paying attention because there was wine trickling into my nose. I'm like, I'm drowning here, but I got to stay in character. <laughs> I'm so um, curious about that, where if where that comes from. And, and not that we, maybe he probably didn't tell you what his interest is. Because one thing I understand about, um, you know, fetishes and kink and different aspects of power play is that it often can be a way of taking back power. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to assume anyone that's into it is, is in any way traumatized too. Because some people have like no trauma and they're just the wildly kinky free humans. Or some people might have saw seen a movie or something about or they thing. or they could have some trauma and this is their way of taking it back but also it could, yeah exactly it could just be like i have no idea where this came from this is turns me on so did he ever share anything about that it was just like no this is um, yeah, i'm giving you money that was definitely a boundary that i had to draw with my clients like if you're going to share some sort of like emotional stuff please refrain from doing so because when emotions and sex work start to blend that becomes a little bit of a murky area uh and it's happened before where I ran into a client at the grocery store. Mm. And yeah, they were, they. In like, the produce section or? <laughs> in poultry or in the meat, <laughs> raw meat section. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> Selecting um, a sausage, you're like, hey. Hey, do you want to like play with that at our next playtime? <laughs> but like, I couldn't because he was with his wife and kids. So <laughs> I was like, um. This is probably not a good idea for us to be in the exact same grocery store. So I'm going to keep quiet and I'm going to ignore you. And we're just going to go our separate ways. So, yeah, like I had to draw like an emotional boundary when it comes to sex work. Just well, anonymity is part of sex special. work, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So I'm like, I have a life too. Like up to this day, my parents don't know that I was a sex worker. I'm pretty sure they never will. But, you know, people have lives and... You know, it, as sad as it is to say, but they had some shame around hiring a sex worker, you know, and like, I feel bad for those people because their needs are their needs are not getting met. And when it does get met by someone like me, they have to hide it. I'm like, oh, mm. like, I want you to be proud of who you are. But like, you know, don't start whipping out your dick in the produce section of whole foods and just like <laughs> probably not the place after. yeah no no <laughs> so is part of what you love and and sorry that's a continuation from my last question because i know amy has some questions too it's not all about me uh is so is part of what you love about some of these experiences uh or something that you enjoy about the sex work is it like the variety or uh just tapping into certain folks desires or can you, I don't know, can you go deeper into that? I mean, I really enjoyed sex work because I, well, not only was I really good at it, but also the exposure of different sex acts and sexual backgrounds. Like, I was exposed to, let's say, I don't know, from the most vanilla to the most non-vanilla and like everything in between and things still come up to this day where I'm like, oh, okay, I never really thought of doing it like that. And it was just like such a wild ride for me to see all these different backgrounds and how people express their desire and express their emotion in a space that allows them to when the world doesn't. And that, I think that was really like what drew me to sex work. Like I'm helping these people to be more in touch with their most authentic self in a space where there's like no judgment or like, you know, you're free to do whatever you want. 
unless it says on our waiver <laughs> that like I'm not gonna let you whip me, but you know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like you it was. Can pee on me with Pinot Grigio. You can pee on me. You can like take a deuce right there on the floor. Oh. But <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was just so wonderful to be part of someone's sexually um, sexual experimentation. Mm-hmm. Well, and and I think that I wonder about that part that you were saying about how it's it's a little sad that you with you it's like a healing experience for them, but yet they can't go or, or healing or learning or just feeling awesome and feeling alive, um, and then they have to go and hide it. And that's I, looking at society's ideas. And I know that for folks too who are under touched and under fucked, and whether it's like in their relationship, maybe they're in a relationship, or just in general, it's hard for me to find people to date. People don't aren't attracted to me. Um, It's COVID and I'm not getting any touch. I have a fetish that a lot of people are attracted to, at least in my social circles. And so then they feel uh, disconnected and like this big part of them is turned off. And yet they still have this aversion to sex work because they like, well, that means I'm desperate. I shouldn't have to pay for it. Um, When I just feel like that's just the social conditioning that we've been we've been taught because a lot of people I know that are down with sex work that are like, oh, yeah, no, I, I'm so stoked to, to be working with sex workers. They're really stoked on the fact that there is no pressure. It's all about their pleasure. They don't have to deal with I mean, of course, there's still consent. And you're still a person as a sex worker. And I, I hope that people that are having sex with, or doing escorting or whatever and engaging with sex workers are still treating them like people. But it's less of the mind game of like, do you love me? What, you know, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Am I pleasuring you enough? Instead, you can just relax, enjoy and make your, your requests. And then the sex worker can choose if they want to meet that. Um, so I guess maybe that was my question for you. Do you feel like that's a big part of it? It's just that it's society stuff that makes it shameful for people. And if that wasn't the case, maybe they would be a little bit more like, yeah, no, this is my jam because I'm getting pleasure. I mean, I think... Uh hiring a sex worker out of all lines of sex work might be considered the most shameful because why is it, you know, like, let's look at all the other forms of sex work, strippers, porn actors, camming. Those are like, from what I can see, a little more acceptable. You and know, legal. Because, at least or here. legal. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Like you can go to a strip bar, you can, you know, buy a porn subscription and nobody bats an eye. But like the moment you think, Hmm, maybe I should hire an escort or a prostitute or whatever. Then people are like, wow, you're, you can't even get it yourself. And it's like, well, yeah. So I hire someone. I don't want to cook. There are some days where I just don't want to like, you know, go to the grocery store and like chop up the onions and fry an egg. I'll just order Uber Eats. It's a need. It's a basic human need, like having to eat, having sex. I can, I just, don't want to have to work for it. So people need to get over themselves and realize that work, sex work is work. It's just like any other form of labor. Like, you know, I am using my body to perform a specific act for a monetary exchange, just like the way, I don't know, a white collar Wall Street worker would be using their body to type, using their mind to make a decision. I just happen to be using my huge elephant cock. <laughs> um, gotta, gotta go with what you give. Like, I was just, I was just okay. imagining your cock making an elephant sound in that moment. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my god! Oh, wow. <laughs> that was not done by production people. That was real. That was Tim. That was, <laughs> that was very good. I didn't <laughs> that. So, <laughs> I think sex work is. And Amy and I have advocated for sex work. I have even longer than the podcast. I know you have yeah. too, especially well, consensual sex work that sex workers that are wanting to do that because they they believe in the practice that, and the and the uh, the. Uh, Go ahead. We'll say that podcast with Danica. We oh. just did one on sex work. Oh, you were right. didn't get to be a part of it, but she was talking about there's um, people who choose sex work for survival, and there's I forgot the other term. People who choose it uh, with more, I guess, more privilege is what she may have said. Um, so more out of out of uh, more active choice, and and that was really interesting to me to hear because I think what a lot of people do is they hear about the survival sex work, mm-hmm. human trafficking, mm-hmm. or people with, with coming from some terrible situations or being forced into it um, for various reasons. And then they put it all in that category. And I thought that mm-hmm. was really interesting to hear that that part of that. It's not all about survival. In fact, a lot of people love their jobs. Yeah. Com- I have, actually have a friend who is a survival sex worker. Like mm-hmm. he will uh, exchange sex 
for couch surfing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he'll yeah. he'll travel. The, the, yeah, he'll travel the world and just meet some hot men just in exchange for a night to sleep. You know, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that there's so much stigma around it. You know, like why why can't I exchange sex for a bed? And then all of a sudden, like, you know, this, this is kind of like going back to trading before we even had money. <laughs> What's the difference? What's the big deal? People need yeah, to loosen we, up. We were trading services forever. And sex yeah. was, is, is, a, is a very old profession. I can't say it's the oldest, but I was actually corrected on that by historian Daniele Bolelli. I think that's how he says last name, because he said, well, you had to have another profession to pay for the sex work mm-hmm. before sex workers could be there. Uh, but it is a very, very old profession. And I want to just say, like, I mean, I have, uh, I'm doing air quotes, uh, hoard myself out in ways where to ex- exchange something like people, I don't know, buying me a nice dinner, or like the VIP section in Vegas or something where and I'm not having sex with them necessarily. But although maybe I may have hooked up with some of them later and there's like that some sort of like energetic exchange piece there. And I, I, I don't I'm not saying that in a necessarily negative way, because I, I know that it's just it's just energy. It was just an energy piece. And whether someone chooses to use their body to um, maybe receive something else. Well, yeah. And there's also uh, there's like the sugar baby, sugar daddy. Oh, yeah. Sugar Ooh, mama. Yeah, that's me. Right? So that's <laughs> also an, a, a, where there is not actually a lot of times, depending, there is not any bodily fluids or even body parts mm-hmm. exchange. You can you can be, as as you mentioned, just with escorting, you can you don't have to have any physical uh, mm-hmm. exchanges. And so right, that's, exactly. a, that's a thing. There's a website for it and, and there's many levels. And, and I don't know I, if people think of that as sex work and in, in terms of sex work, I guess it could be considered. It can be like uh, a sugar daddy, sugar baby type of relationship. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to. I've had sugar daddies where they, well, actually I've, Part of why I was able to pay my tuition was because of some sugar daddies, you know. Uh, I've put my money from sugar daddies into, uh, I guess Americans call it a 401k. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, sure so, do. <laughs> exactly. So uh, here in Canada. For y'all, okay, if you want one, exactly. just go get one. Save for your <laughs> uh, here in Canada, that's called an RRSP or Registered Retirement Savings Plan. So I put all or not all, like a huge chunk of my escorting money into an RRSP so that uh, somewhere down the road I can like retire comfortably. So, and there was no sex whatsoever that happened, but sex in the traditional sense of like penis in hole or hole on mouth or what whatever orifice you want to put it in. But yeah, like I guess there's also nothing wrong with a sugar baby, sugar daddy, or sugar mama type of relationship, as long as all parties are consenting to, you know, the same thing. Uh, you're all in agreement of what kind of relationship this is. And also with sugaring, sex is probably on the bottom of the list. Mm. It's yeah. connection. Connection is what a lot of uh, sugar relationships have in common. I've seen sugar babies go towards their uh, sugar mom or sugar dad to like help with a resume to job hunt. I had a friend who met a sugar daddy through Tinder that helped him get a job. Mm. Like, you know, it it exists in so many ways and it doesn't necessarily have to have sex. But, you know, you kind of, I think the fun of it is like, Oh, daddy, I kind of need a little more money. So if you do this for me, can you, I, I'll I'll do something for you. You know, <laughs> that Tim, maybe you should be a financial dominatrix. I don't want to should you. I but can be a fin dom. I can be a fin dom. <laughs> we've had fina- We've had a financial dom uh, on the show before, and it was so interesting. And then Amy accidentally almost became one, and she was. Hey, uh, I did make six hundred dollars. She, hey. she didn't. She didn't know she that even was- it was on the table, and then someone was wanting her to financially dominate them. And then my partner asked, like, "Are you offended that no one wants you to?" financially dominate them i'm like no i'm not offended i'm just gonna reap the benefits from amy's fine yeah uh, <laughs> i was the, like i'll take you out up. to dinner well yeah the, all the i was other, like yeah amy i really other, want this dress okay all the other financial dominatrixes were like your first mistake was giving back all the money because all of a sudden i had six thousand yeah, dollars in my account but i was like 
Um, I can't, I need to have this clearly defined and I'm not humiliation. play. I have shameless sex is my podcast with mm-hmm. April, right? Humiliation yeah. play to tell someone they're a terrible piece of shit. And I'm going to blackmail them. If they don't give me more money does oh, not yes. fit into the Amy Baldwin <laughs> persona. And I'm a public it's like, you're bad. Yeah. Um, you're real bad. I had to ask people for help. I'm like, how do I do this? They're like, just she asked me and I was like, I just be a no I, clue. Yeah, she, we, neither of us are good at I it. I mean, yeah. there was one sugar relationship where I was a sort of fin dom to a capacity it happened like only a handful of times where he gave me his platinum card and basically let me do whatever i want with it oh yeah he he got off he got off on the idea of just like me having access to his money uh there would be a time when we agreed that like uh between the hours of this and this that's when you can spend whatever you want but like outside of that you have to stop which is like Mm -hmm. you know fair that's a good boundary so, like, I bought myself some shoes or, like, uh, I don't know. What else did I Call buy? me next time that happens to you so I can tell you <laughs> all my favorite stores. I prefer Gucci's. Gucci, Gucci's yeah. There. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Like, it's all Gucci, the, babe. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Prada. Get the shoes, babe. Get the shoes. Hey, I'm not asking for a Birkin. Just a little Gucci, okay? Just a little Gucci. <laughs> a little, maybe a Jag or a nice Mercedes yeah. Benz every now and then. <laughs> you know, just, just the little things. It sounds like such a, um, I think to a lot of people, like a, um, a, I don't know, fairy tale is not even the word. Like to a lot, it's unfathomable, uh, unfathomable uh, yeah. to a lot of folks that, that one, that maybe this, that someone might be, get off to being like, hey, honey, go buy whatever you want. But, but people, one, get off or get fulfilled by anything and everything. And it never, and they just invite people to think outside of themselves, first of all. And then, um, and that's, that's up to them. And I guess one of the issues with the financial dominatrix thing was that, some of the folks, because they're into the humiliation thing and they're so turned on by it, they might actually give away their whole livelihood. Mm-hmm. Because That's what you were concerned with. I was concerned. You're like, what if he's going to give? He has what kids? Or he, she yeah, doesn't really like, know. You cannot give away the alimony want, yeah. to me. And I have all these, all these conditions. She has such a different. conscious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't have super conscious. sweet. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm, yeah, I have Amy ethics. was like, I can't. I was like, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say give me his info. Yeah, I did it. Uh, but I, I do too. I, I, do, I couldn't karmic. Oh, people. I'm fully yeah. heartless. I will take all of your money and I will just run away with it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go have a good old time. Part of me is like, I wish I could do that, but it's okay. I, am, I, I'm I have rent to, to pay. Money. I have bills. You know, I will just take a cash advance from the nearest machine and so you- run. <laughs> and you still so you, I know and we're, we have a couple other questions but you, are you currently doing sex work I know you have your podcast now and we're, we're not this isn't the end of the show we're going to ask you for your plugs later but are you <laughs> are you are you working with clients now or is that something that is a, a no, blast from the past? Uh, uh, yeah I would say it is a blast from the past like my last client was in 2016 uh, sometimes there are days where I wish I did go back but you know uh, I'm feeling way more fulfilled no pun intended, uh, filled. Uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling <laughs> way more fulfilled as a sex educator. In like, I feel like the knowledge I have and the platform that sex educators are given can be disseminated even further. You know, mm-hmm. uh, instead of just like one client at a time where I can like fulfill their needs. But mm-hmm. like when we're on social media teaching about sex education or like holding online workshops we can reach more people and our goal as sex educators is like more widespread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I know that throughout the course of uh, speaking to folks when I, I don't know when I've been to countries that have sex work as a legalized occupation where you can walk in and you can, you can get uh, you can feel safe about getting a sex worker to uh, have an experience with you. Safety is, is a huge piece of that, right? Speaking to physical safety, of course, especially if you're alone or there's not a a proper establishment, Uh, but also we can talk about, um, not, not necessarily STIs, but that is another thing too. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to speak to safety and when you were doing this practice, how, how do you navigate this realm? Uh, First of all, physical safety, I had to take self-defense classes. I feel like that was very important. Um, But that was only when I was doing it on my own. When I was working with Ashley, the pimp, um, I would have her like on speed dial so that she can call 
a guy she knows quote air quotes a guy she knows to like mm. help help me get out of a dangerous situation but when i was doing it on my own i took some self-defense classes that that was just for me to ensure my physical safety uh there i would also do like a very extensive screening process i would ask them like all these different questions like what what are you into what aren't you into i need to know that you're a real person um I need you to like take a picture of today's newspaper holding up the peace sign so I know that you're like real. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that was just one thing. And then for sexual safety, um, that was ba- that was a risk I had to take, you know, because there are clients that wanted to have sex with me unprotected, which is like fine. But if I did not trust them enough, that's when I had to use protection. I'll like have a dental dam with me, a fisting glove, a bunch of condoms. Um, and I would be tested regularly to the point where the clinic knew me by my first name. <laughs> oh, Tim, here for your regular? Yeah, just the usual. Chris, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it, there was a lot of things. And like when, and also on mental safety, that's when I could finally afford to see a therapist. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know because sex and your sexual health and your mental health go hand in hand mm-hmm. you know it, it was so it was so draining for me to like you know listen to all these people's stories and to want to please them but what about tim who's gonna please tim so <laughs> i finally had enough money to like see a therapist for the first time and that's kind of what helped me power through the remaining last years of my sex work I think the other, so the other thing that Danica said, this person that was talking about sex work and escorting was the stigma that sex workers have, they're dirty, they have a bunch of STIs, that they don't get tested. We're and filthy, it, we're gross. We're filthy. Disgusting. And what you were saying is like sometimes, you know, you might receive money and not wear a condom in, based on trust and, or have them wear a condom or whatever the thing was. And, and let me tell you, everyone that's, that's judging that right now, mm-hmm. how many of your friends that are not sex workers have done that? Because I know every single one of my friends, not every single, but most of them, including myself at times has had si- sketchy situations where I did not get any money out of it. But I was like, you know what? I don't know their status. I'm just going to trust them and take a gamble on this. Mm-hmm. And so, but yet there's this idea that if a sex worker were to choose that, then um, that that's it's all, worse. all of a sudden dirty. Yeah. Dirty. And it's sex dirty workers, money. I know this is the other thing Danica said, sex workers are getting tested more than non-sex workers and, mm-hmm. and not, maybe exactly. not all of them, but a lot of them are. And, and I guess it's probably dependent on the field because sex work is a big umbrella term for all kinds of mm-hmm. different things. But um, I think that's, that's just something that just can't really judge a book by its cover and make all these assumptions. And that, porn too. I mean, they try oh, porn. They, yeah. porn I, I, it's the same. I mean, you're, you're performing they're and tested all the time. they have to get tested all the time. And oh, they yeah. tried to pass laws in, in California about wearing a condom and it was like, it didn't work. No, well, that's yeah. not going to work. Like, yeah. well, you got to keep making that money. And, yeah. you know, and, and the SESTA yeah. FOSTA laws, you're talking about screening the SESTA FOSTA laws in the i think that's just the united states right it, it really is, yeah. affected the p- people's ability to screen it affected the craigslist ads and, and red book was something that you, you, it was like yelp for for johns for, for people and sex workers alike to keep people safe and now it's just gone a little more underground but it didn't go away it didn't stop sex work and it didn't stop shady sex work mm-hmm. like that's all still and if you don't know what we're talking about i'm going to give you the episode to listen to because we did a whole episode about sesta fossa a couple of them it's very interesting to listen and it hasn't shifted it was uh protective laws to help like, like a couple years ago human trafficking i think happened. it was two years ago and mm-hmm. yeah um, it's really it actually hindered uh sex workers and 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 their safety instead of doing what they wanted to do it actually was more dangerous and created more danger while she's looking that up i'm just going to drop my next question for you to ponder there so um you are an out and a proud gay asian man working in the field of sexuality oh yeah now in sex education but also you said work in sex work and i'm curious what your thoughts are about that in regards to um your safety and if you ever saw racism or homophobia homophobic perspectives showing up especially in sex education or or maybe i'll reframe this how what are your thoughts about sex education and what's missing in it is specifically maybe conversations about racism or anti-racism or Mm -hmm. homophobia or sex positivity what's not happening in those conversations how some sex educators might still be out there not sharing anti-racist perspectives Mm -hmm, or sex mm -hmm. positive perspectives that are supporting queer folks um i'll just drop it there and april might have (laughs) an answer for you soon but i'm gonna drop it there as she googles things 
That is a huge question. So uh, in my experience as a sex worker, I did encounter a lot of racism and homophobia. Uh, Racism in the context that I was fetishized, Uh, like, you know, a tight Asian bottom with a really tiny dick. Um, And I also had to like work basically 10 times more than my white friends who would like, I don't know, they'll earn in a day what I earn in five days. So that was like really hard because like I had to, you know, constantly find all of these clients on my own while it was so easy for them to get one. Uh, And homophobia was very present in sex work because a lot of these clients who like, you know, they were, I would say straight men. I'm not sure, but they were men who were ashamed of having sex with another guy. So um, it, it was so surprising just to see, like, you know, even people who hire escorts can be, you know, quite gross. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's kind of what drove me to, I guess, it, it, that's what my mission statement became in sex education to help dismantle systems of oppression such as racism and homophobia uh, that are still present within the sex education field. You know, there are people out there parroting really disgusting sentiments of, you know, like Asian stereotypes or uh, like even in porn, when you see like, uh, black male bodies being like the epitome of sex and then that kind of trickles down into society where black men don't feel like up to par with how uh, how their body should be um, so yeah like having to dismantle uh, systems of oppression as a sex educator go like you know I want to I want to I want you to be able to fuck but I also want you to be aware of like the the pleasure that's being hindered by these systems of oppression, you know, for example, like she who must not be named Kim, (laughs) Kim Anami. uh, She came up with that video about uh, Jade egg from China. Kung Fu Vagina. vagina. Well, I think um, Kim Anami, the way she apologized, really, that was hard for me oh, yeah. because she did receive a lot of negative press from folks that were uh, talking about how it wasn't even a microaggression, it was a macro aggression oh, yeah. so, so culturally. Fully. And so I was really bummed by um, by that um, that apology because it wasn't an apology at all. It was actually mm-hmm. it was mocking the apology. It was yeah. a yeah. mocking. Yeah. yeah, which was like that, that hurt yeah. me to see that. And so uh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry to interject. I just wanted to add that piece because- No, no, uh, all good. I'm a huge fan of art and all sorts of art. And I am a huge fan of vulvas, vaginas, penises, and all sorts of things in between. I'm sure when freedom of expression is is like when we can use that, like, well, this is my right. This is free speech. This is freedom of expression. When, when you have people that are at the expense of other people, you know, you know, that's what I mean. It's like, you can have freedom of expression, but at what cost? Tim, when it comes to, revamping or what what does sex education need and not even in terms of in 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 like modern day but in general like moving forward if if we could change things what how can we support queer BIPOC folks all Mm -hmm. all, be how can sex education be more anti-racist learning where sex education came from and the dark history behind it uh, even people such as like Masters and Johnson had some problematic things. Like um, they thought that same-sex relationships were quote unquote deviant. Uh, like clearly it's not. So when you learn the really murky tip of the iceberg history of sex education, you know how to lead the way for future sex educators. When you learn about things like Tuskegee or the Puerto Rico birth control experiments, or even here in Canada when they wanted to forcibly sterilize their indigenous women, you are more aware of how we got here so that you know how to build a better world for generations now and for generations of the future. Once you have a knowledge of the history, you know 
how to move forward and Mm -hmm. you know how to make the world a better more pleasurable more orgasmic place for the rest Mm -hmm. of us we want that and what i'm hearing there's there's a lot about um accountability and but and even aside aside from accountability too just awareness as well and asking Mm -hmm. the deeper questions and staying open to learning more april finally found the number of the episode that we talked about the sesta foster laws it was with a lingerie Mm -hmm. model who works out of los angeles it's episode number 60 also named kim but a different kim kim k yeah yeah (laughs) she's kardashian Kardashian. incredibly intelligent yeah yeah, not Kim Kardashian. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we could talk to you forever and ever and ever. And so yeah. for our listeners, they can listen to you and they can hear us on your podcast. And you have more to plug besides your podcast as well. But please, please, please tell our listeners how they can find you, how they can work with you, how they can find your podcast, all the things. For sure. So all my plugs, not including my butt. Um, <laughs> uh, my website is sexedwithtim.com where you can find my blog and my advice column. You are welcome to write in your blog ideas or your questions for me. Uh, you can also support my podcast, Sex Ed with Tim, streaming on all podcasting platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, wherever you want. Uh, you can also support my show through Patreon, where I have a exclusive podcast called Sex Ed with Tim One Night Stand, where it's like the more salacious parts that I don't really want to share with the rest of the world. It's very personal and it's very me. Uh, my social media at in, on Instagram and Twitter are both the same handles, Gay Slut Clown and Sex Ed with Tim. You can also like and follow me on Facebook at Sex Ed with Tim. And I, I think that's all my plugs. I just need uh, to take the one that's in my butt. butt plug. Yeah, where's yeah. the butt plug one? And yeah. I have to say, yeah. go check out the Instagram because your pole work and your floor work and those heels. Thank you. Damn. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it hurts, but you, you know what? You're looking pretty when you're yeah, you, really well, you like, look pretty. <laughs> but it hurts yeah. so much because it's like I'm pressing my skin against really hard metal and like, oh, but yeah. you look you look so sexy doing it. I'm like, it's okay. Smile through the pain. Smile through the pain. Oh, it could, is yeah. pretty beautiful, and thank you for for expressing yourself both uh, <laughs> on social media and on the Shameless Sex podcast. And this was this was a great bonus episode, Tim. Thank, thank you. you. No, I thank enjoyed you so much for it having so me. Yeah, there was a little bit of fun, a little bit of reality, and a little bit of suggestions. Equal parts knowledge, equal yeah. parts entertainment. We're here like the for perfect it. cocktail. Ooh. All right, uh, Cock. yeah, it's cocktail. Cost. Cock is on my mind right now. I am in desperate need of cock. Well, Actually, speaking of sex work, I just oh. hired a sex work for the sex worker for the weekend. So Oh nice. There you go. Yeah. No shame in the sex work game. Oh yeah. Like, He's hot. Okay. He's so Ooh, nice. hot. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Enjoy the weekend. And for all of you shameless sex listeners out there, guess what? You just joined us for a beautiful bone us episode. Ooh. So we don't know what day you're listening. It could be Friday. It could be Monday. It could be a hump e day. Ooh, but we will see you next Tuesday for a beautiful episode of Shameless Sex. Thank you for being a Shameless Sex Revolutionary. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.